All right, guys, back over at the shop and uh, about to start messing around with the uh, Del Sol here. Uh, had a little bit of fun earlier uh, messing around with Chris's jet ski, so she had a couple clips of playing around with it. <laughs> that hurt? I was riding on the jet ski. It's fine. <laughs> 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 yeah, the Rex. There's many more than that. Uh, so here's the supercharger, and uh, uh, it looks pretty good, but this was kind of crazy. They didn't have it wrapped well at all. Yeah, they they just saw it a minute ago. Look, they didn't see it like that, did they? Yeah, they do. <laughs> so anyways, uh, let me pull this thing out and show it to you. Here's the supercharger, and this is the AMR 500. They also make an AMR 300. Uh, so the 300 is on some key cars, the Subaru key cars. This one is off of some of the Nissan. So <clears throat> it's uh, A-I-S-I-N. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that but that's the company that makes these they do not sell these directly to the public so all of these have been uh rebuilt uh they pull these off the cars uh this one comes off of a nissan march so the nissan march super turbos this is the supercharger on the super turbo um application so uh for every one full uh, full rotation of this it makes an extra 500 cc's so it adds another half a liter to the engine uh, where Christopher's supercharger adds 2.3 liters to the engine. Uh, but it's a tiny bit bigger than this. It's probably three times longer than this. So, Sque squeeze you. <laughs> so, it takes 90 milliliters of gear oil. It's supposed to have 85 W90, I think. So, uh, we're just going to put a little WD-40 in there. Yeah, we'll score a little WD and it'll be fine. Um, you can actually, as you spin over, you can you kind of yeah, hear, hear it make a little bit of noise there. Um, but it'll actually make some suction. And something that's interesting to know, this is a two-rotor design. So the lot where you can they see just, uh, they intermesh with each other. And what they do is they take the gas. So right now, this is the inlet. And the gas actually goes around the outside and then down the bottom. So you can spin it either way you want to. If you spin it the other way, then it pulls the gas from the bottom around the outside and up. So it can go either way you want, however you need to mount it. Uh, it does have one fill and one uh, 
So that, that's depending on how you mount it, you may not even have to take it off every time you check the oil or empty it or fill it. So, um, so how do you? Is there a dipstick on the end of that? Bolt? No, no. You, you just check put, it. Put 90 milliliters in it, and oh. I guess if it starts, so you making, would never really check it. You're supposed to check it periodically uh, because all mechanical seals will use a little bit of oil. So that's the drain and the fill. That well, yeah, a lot of times people pull these off and check the seals. You can buy the rebuild kit for these and stuff. But being that it's a Japanese product, it should be pretty durable. Um, and it looks pretty well made. I mean, it looks cool as heck with all the fins and everything. Like it looks like a Definitely cool. Like yeah, it's it's got a it's got a neat look to it, and it's you know same kind of thing. And this is the root style uh, supercharger. This is a knockoff version of the Whipple. See the offset pulley. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's essentially what's funny is what what's cool to me is that it really looks like a like a Wyan we'll supercharger. Call it wimple. Wimple. It's a wimple. Yeah, that's because you got the essentially the Roush. It's the VMP, right? It's oh, the yeah, same. Pretty yeah. Much. I'm not talking about the wimple. You just pay less because it's not the same Roush. Yeah. So, but what's cool is this looks like a Wyan. Like it looks like the supercharger sticking out of the hood of like the Mad Max car. Yeah. Except for there's not a switch to turn on and off. Yeah. That makes no sense. <laughs> that makes no sense. So on here, we've got the four rib belt and we've got to go to the smaller pulley there, which we're gonna to have to measure and then measure the other pulley that comes in. Now the maximum RPM on here is 16,000. So you cannot rev this over that. This engine revs to 8,500. And if it goes double speed at the pulley, then that's gonna be 17,000, which is over what this thing's supposed to rev. Probably not a huge deal, but that's only if it's two to one. So we've got to measure that, otherwise I won't be able to rev the engine up all the way. So uh, we'll have to figure that out and then see what we've got pulley wise. Um, but it may limit the amount of, um, which I normally don't run this thing up. I normally shift around seven to 7,200 or so uh, in it anyways. How big of a pulley could you put on it to offset? Well, it could have a big a pulley on it. It's only going to be like what, a thousand off? Yeah. But that's the, the pulleys seem to be hard to find. The pulley, I, I ordered this from the U.S. Okay, and it got here like three or four days. I ordered the pulley only from China, so it's going to be another week or two before it even comes in. So once we get it in, like we might be able to find, like go to one of the big industrial supply shops and have them, you know, line up a, a pulley for us, but. You know, well, may, which may be something we have to do, but hopefully it'll work and and we'll be good. We just need to to measure that. But the smaller we go here, the better chance we've got over there of not going over two to one, so or a little under two to one if we can do it. But obviously, the bigger pulleys here is going to make that spin even faster. So something we got to look at uh, that could be uh, pretty important. So, uh, but that's it. Uh, I'm I'm pretty happy with the way that the supercharger itself looks right out of the box um so should be pretty neat uh should have some pretty good wine to it uh on this engine we should be making five to seven psi um, because it's a bigger engine now if we went with a smaller engine like a 750 uh four stroke you could make like 15 psi the maximum output of horsepower on this is 150 horsepower so we'll probably make, I'm guessing, 50 to 70 horsepower, depending on how many PSI boosts we can put. I do have another fuel pressure regulator coming. We're going to get it mounted in this area here, and we'll have uh, intake coming in. And then for now, I'm probably just going to run a pipe directly into the intake and see where we're at. I do have the old intercooler off my old CRX, so we might end up piping it through, um, doing some stuff with it. So... Uh, for now, I just kind of want to see it work and hear it whine. So, first thing I do, which I think is probably the hardest part, is figuring out how to mount this thing. All right, guys. So we're thinking that off of this far rib, oh, guys, we're thinking it's going to go down through here, and then we've got these two holes here. I'm hoping we can bolt into that one. Just feels like a hole, actually. No, that's threaded. Are you sure? Yeah, that one's threaded. But anyways, if we can bolt across through here with a 90. L bracket like this, yeah. then we can go over here and cut wherever we need to cut. And then the other part of that 90 L will lay in here. <laughs> we'll cut it and lay it in here and weld this together 
That'll bolt here, will bolt to the supercharger out here, then off of one of these bolts, we'll actually run a heim joint and make it actually pivot. So we just gotta figure that part out. All right guys, so I did get me a, another used uh, door handle there. So at least I've got a door handle on that side now. So that looks better. The only thing I gotta do is cover this up and then rewrap it. Should look pretty good.